Life began on Earth uh, at least before about three and a half billion years ago because we have very, very sim simple uh, fossils of bacteria from that time. So life began somewhere between four and a half billion and three and a half billion years ago, probably about um, 3.8, uh, 4 billion years perhaps. And, and what sort of life started initially? What are we talking about at the very beginning? Nobody knows what it was at the very beginning. Right. The first fossils that we have look a bit like bacteria. So um, bacteria were probably the first uh, life forms that are, were big enough to make, to make fossils. And then, after that, what did you have? You had the beginnings of animal life, and then eventually man well, started. Not for, not for quite a long time. Um, it would have been mostly bacteria for the first couple of billion years of, of life. And then um, a very important thing happened, which was the formation of the so-called eukaryotic cell. The eukaryotic cell is a much, much bigger cell than the bacterial cell, our cells are all eukaryotic. We are eukaryotes, and so are plants, fungi, uh, protozoa. Uh, the eukaryotic cell was formed by a series of collaborations, cooperations between bacteria who came together uh, to form a more complex kind of cell. It's a very remarkable process uh, and hasn't been known about for all that long. But uh, the eukaryotic cell contains little sub-elements which, which are derived from bacteria, things like mitochondria in animal cells and plant cells, chloroplasts in plant cells which do the photosynthesis capturing the sunlight. These are, nowadays you can see recognizably they are bacteria, I mean they are yes. descended from, from bacteria and they live inside our cells, indeed they make our cells. So, but when did the human being ourselves begin as, of course, we were Neanderthals, you know, way, way, way back in history. Well, that, that came much, much, much later. I mean, in, in between the start of the eukaryotic cell, um, you had um, things, protozoa, which, which are um, single eukaryotic cells. They would have formed colonies, which gave, eventually gave rise to multicellular animals. We're all multicellular. We've got lots of different cells. Uh, the first animals, well, the first fossils we have are sort of around um, one billion years or a little bit after, somewhere around there. Um, the first uh, great flowering of um, most of the major groups of modern type animals came at about five billion or between five and five and a half billion years ago. And then not that long after that, you get the first things that look a bit like fish. Yes. Uh, and then um, proper fish with backbones. Uh, and then um, eventually some fish started coming out of the water onto the, onto the land, a bit like modern lungfish, and became amphibians and reptiles and mammals and uh, primates, um, yeah. sort of monkey-like things um, living in trees. And then... You ask when the first humans appeared. Well, it's not a totally precise moment because, of course, we gradually changed mm -hmm. from being more like uh, modern apes. We are apes. I'd, I'd say we didn't change from being apes. We still are apes. But yeah, we, we are descended from apes. From the chimpanzee, is it? No. Uh, we, chimpanzees and us are both descended from a common ancestor. Um, we, we are not just descended from apes. We are apes. Um, and uh, we are upright walking apes. So it's a bit of an arbitrary line you're drawing when you decide when to call it mm -hmm. a human. I mean, um, uh, Australopithecus, an animal like Lucy, was a sort of upright walking chimpanzee. She had the brain of a chimpanzee. She lived about three, billion year, three million years ago. Uh, and um, you could call her an upright walking chimpanzee. Do you want to call her human or not? That's up to you. If you do, then you could say that there were humans th three million years ago. Or you might wish to wait until the genus Homo appeared. And that's an arbitrary decision, too. When do you stop calling an animal Australopithecus? When do you start calling it Homo? Yes. Because evolution is a gradual process, you can't say, OK, that's the end of Australopithecus, now we start with Homo. It wouldn't have been like that. But um, by, by 100,000 years ago, you had humans who definitely would have looked just like us, or as like us as any different types of humans today, Ah. 
fully equipped with brains and the same sort of thinking power? Presumably, presumably the same because their brains were was were, were the same as ours. Um, on the other hand, uh, we don't know when language started, and yeah. uh, so they might well not have been fully equipped in that sort of sense. Uh, we do know that about forty forty to forty five thousand years ago, uh, without any change in the anatomy of humans, there was a great increase in cultural activity, in art, in in painting, in these would be sculpture. the cavemen now, is it? Yes. Uh, and so somewhere around there, uh, you seem to get a major change in human cultural life. But they didn't. it wasn't accompanied by a change in anatomy, as far as we can tell. So that's interesting, actually. The human being, in terms of anatomy, has not evolved at all, really, o over the last 40, 45,000 years or so. Oh, no, not, no. Uh, that's correct. Um, not for about the last hundred thousand wow. years. Uh, that's correct, yes. Isn't that interesting because in your book, The Greatest Show on Earth, you do you have this great chapter about the evolution of dogs. In fact, you refer to this several times. And that the dog, whatever kind of dog, whether it's a beautiful red setter or whether it's a mongrel or a tiny little Jack Russell, they are all descended from wolves originally. But isn't it very interesting to see the dog has evolved in many different characteristics, but the human being hasn't? That's very true. Um, dogs are all descended from wolves, and they have been bred by humans. So humans have sort of uh, put into practice, without knowing it, the process that Darwin later discovered as natural selection. When we do it, it's called artificial selection. Yes. Uh, we actually choose which dogs we want to breed from, and we therefore make breeds like red setters and, and dachshunds by artificial selection. Natural selection, it's nature that does the choosing. The ones that survive are the ones that are chosen for breeding for obvious reasons. But we can understand the process by looking at the artificial selection that's produced different breeds of dogs. Now you ask why that hasn't happened to humans and that's a very interesting question. Humans has, have of course diverged over the same sort of period yes. into different races yes. um, all over the world. Um, we emerged out of Africa where our ancestors came from and diverged to form Chinese and, and um, Inuit and Australian Aboriginals and, and so on. Um, and Native Americans and so on. Um, now, as far as we know, humans have not been subjected to the same kind of artificial selection, deliberate breeding for characteristics that dogs have. If they had, then it would then no doubt we could have produced sort of dachshund humans yes. and, and red setter humans and, and things. Um, but it looks as though it's something like natural selection that has produced the difference between um, the Inuit and Australian Aboriginals and the Dinkas and, and all the other various human tribes. Which is interesting when you look at all of the arguments both for and against uh, genetic development and, and, and the development of human genes and cloning. And we saw, of course, the huge controversy when Dolly the sheep was cloned and the fears people have if those in the scientific world start messing around uh, with human cloning. Uh, what are your own views on that, Richard? Well, it's interesting. You did make the observation that we haven't done to humans what we've done to dogs. And given that we didn't do that, it's, it's not clear why we would suddenly start doing other things like cloning or, or genetic engineering on on humans. But there is a drive towards that, though, isn't there? Or certainly to push the science in that direction. Well, that that may be so. Uh, but um, I just think it's sort of it's sort of interesting that any time during the last few thousand years we could have done selective breeding of humans, as we did with dogs and cabbages, etc. Uh, so um, now that we know how to clone animals and have done it with a few animals like sheep, um, it is theoretically possible to do it with humans. But since we haven't done artificial selection with humans, why would we suddenly do cloning with humans?